Alright, it's time to talk a bit more about sound, and in this video we're going to talk about how fast sound travels. Um, specifically in the three different states of matter that we know about, uh, solids, liquids, and gases. Um, first though, we need to remind ourselves a very important fact about sound, and that's related to this picture right here. This is an extremely iconic and very famous picture. I believe this is, um, you know, I should know who that is. I believe that's Neil Armstrong and his photographer would be Buzz Aldrin, um, the first two men to walk on the moon. Um, you may be one of those people who has bought into the conspiracy theories that man never set foot on the moon and it was all a hoax by NASA. I can tell you as a physics teacher and a scientist that the hoax claims are ridiculous and man actually walked on the moon. If you want more details about that, feel free to look them up. Um, there are some really good websites that explain all of the hoax claims and how they are. They have no merit, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about sound. So, um, these guys were on the moon. On the moon, there is a vacuum around them. Uh, of course, they have air inside their spacesuit, otherwise they'd be dead. But all around them out here, there is no air. There is no medium of any kind. So, sound could not travel between these two men on the moon, unless, of course, they had radios, which they did. Now, if they were to try to talk to each other without the radio, with the radio turned off, they're screaming, Ah, Buzz, what's going on? Help! You know, whatever. Um, they'll be able to hear themselves inside their own spacesuit because there's air in there, but there's no way that that sound could transmit from this astronaut to the other one, which, incidentally, here he is, reflected in the helmet. There is the photographer uh, who is taking this picture. Um, and then, of course, you can see this guy's own shadow reflected in his helmet as well. And the lunar lander over here, which would be off to the side that way. That's cool. Anyway, point is, sound requires a medium. This would be a vacuum. These guys would not be able to hear each other except by using radio waves, which are electromagnetic waves, and they can travel through a vacuum. So, bam, that's review. Okay, moving on. So how fast does sound travel in different kinds of media? Well, let's say steel, for example, which would be this railroad tie. Would sound travel through that? Yes, it would. If you were to strike this with some object uh, and somebody had their ear on it down there, they would hear the sound inside that solid. Um, what about a liquid? Does sound travel through a liquid? It really does, yeah. If you bang something together underwater, somebody else underwater would be able to hear it. Um, and of course, both of these pictures have air, and we all know that sound travels through air, no question. Happens all the time when we talk and we can hear each other. Or, for example, as you're listening to this video, if you are using your computer's speakers instead of headphones, um, the sound is traveling through the air to get to your ears. So, pretty cool stuff. But how fast does that happen? That's the topic of the rest of this video. Okay, so here we have uh, molecular models of the different states of matter, a gas, a liquid, and a solid, and what they might look like if we could see the atoms or molecules just represented as circles here. Um, so this is to illustrate to you uh, the way that sound might travel through these things on the molecular level, okay? So hopefully this will help you to see how the speed of sound would be different in these different types of media, all right? So I've got a black molecule, quote-unquote, atom in each one. Um, molecule or atom, whichever you prefer to think of it. Uh, they are different, of course, but for our purposes, they would just treat them as a unit and we're symbolizing them as a circle. All right, so maybe we'll just say they're atoms. Now these atoms are going to move around at random. When a sound wave comes through, it can only be transmitted through the medium by these atoms or molecules bumping into each other and then transmitting that energy through the medium by, by physical contact. So they bounce, they bounce off each other and that transmits the energy of the wave through the material. So what might that look like? Well, say this guy comes over, bam, bumps into that guy. Now I can't actually move this guy because of the way that I, that I made this diagram, but, uh, Bam! Bumps into that guy, and then let's say that guy bumps into this guy, and that guy bumps into some other one off to the side here that we can't see. So they have to move physically, bam, that whole distance, 
bam, that whole distance I noted, and then bam, into some other one. Um, all right, so they actually have to physically move through that distance before they can collide with each other. Um, that takes some time, right? Uh, physically moving through those distances takes time. So to collide with that one and then for that one to collide with another one. In a liquid, we know that these, these atoms or molecules, these atoms are a lot closer together. So in that case, this guy just has to go bink and bumps into that guy. And then this guy might go bink and bump into that guy. And this one bumps into that one and that one bumps into this one. So, um, that's going to happen a lot faster because they have far less distance. You know, this one just has to go that tiny distance, tiny distance, tiny distance, and that can transmit the energy much quicker through the liquid. Quickest of all, of course, would be the solid where this guy moves and immediately bumps into his neighbor who immediately bumps into his neighbor, immediately bumps into his neighbor, and that just Bam! They just all bump, 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 and they transmit the vibration very quickly because they're right next to each other. They they don't even have to move hardly. They just bump, 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 bump all the way down to the end. So in a solid, the sound energy is transmitted very quickly because there's no space to cover in between the molecules. They all just all bump into each other. So summary, sound travels fastest in a solid, Next, fastest in liquid and slowest in a gas. We're going to put some numbers on that for the next slide. Okay, so here are some numbers. Um, the approximate speed of sound in air. Now, this is pretty, actually, these, these, these numbers are pretty accurate as far as we, to the best of our knowledge, um, and lots of experiments and so on. The speed of sound in air at 25 degrees Celsius is this, 346 meters per second. Um... If we did not already do it at the time that you're watching this video, we will be doing a lab where we measure that, uh, and it'll be pretty cool. Um, the speed of sound in fresh water at 25 degrees Celsius is right around, it's just slightly less than, it's like 1,497 or something like that. So I just rounded it off to 1,500 meters per second. Um, quite a lot faster, almost five times as fast as the speed of sound in air. So a lot faster when you get into liquids. Now, it's faster in solids, not as much faster than liquids, but it is still faster, um, three or four times faster, depending on the solid. Um, so here's a couple of several different solids and the speeds in there. So concrete or glass, about 3,800 or 4,000 meters per second. And then steel or granite or titanium, they all have about the same speed, 6,000 meters per second. So we're going to make a summary version of this that you can remember more easily. Um, we're concerned, again, the, the syllabus requires that you know the approximate values of speeds in different phases of matter. So here are the approximate values that I'm going to give you that should work if you have to answer a question about this. All right. So, for example, in a gas, roughly 300 meters per second, although I've seen it where they round this way down to 100, and then they round this to 1,000. And this like 5,000. It's, it's kind of silly to round it off that much. But um, anyway, just keep in mind, in gases, you're in the hundreds. Certainly not more than about 500 meters per second in a gas. Uh, around 300 is a good number. A liquid, usually around 1,500 is a pretty good guess, uh, meters per second. And then in a solid, you're going to be up around 5,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 meters per second. All right. So those are the numerical values that you can um, use, keep in mind, for these different, the speed of sound in different, in different materials, in different media. And then the last thing for this video, I know it's getting a little bit long, but the last thing we need to talk about is an experiment that you could use for calculating the speed of sound in air. All right, we're not going to do this experiment in class, but you, this, is, this is an experiment that they like to use often for... Um, answering questions about how you can calculate the speed of sound in air. Uh, and this is an experiment you could do if you have a place nearby or even on white field, perhaps. Um, what you need is a large wall or cliff or something like that that you can stand a good long distance away from it. And then you need a way of generating a sharp or loud sound that's going to echo 
off of that wall. Remember, an echo is just bouncing. Um, so echo of sound is when sound bounces off of something and then comes back to its source. So um, in this case, you can make a loud sound and it's going to travel to the wall. It's going to bounce off the wall and it's going to come back. Now you need to be far enough away that you can get a significant time delay before you hear the echo. So um, in, for example, in a, in, a, in a relatively small room, there are echoes of sound happening, but you never hear them because they're so fast um, that you can't really distinguish the echo from the actual sound. So you need to be pretty far away from this wall in order to, to distinguish in time with any kind of accuracy the, the time required for the echo to occur after you make the sound. Anyway, you would need a stopwatch, you would need a measuring tape to measure out this distance, and then you would make your sound and time how long it takes for the sound to travel to the wall and back so that you can hear it again. Now, if you're like two or 300 meters away, you're gonna be talking less than two seconds in order for this to occur. So you would need to know the distance here between you and the wall, and you would need to double that because the sound is traveling from you to the wall and back again. All right, I'm not gonna do any numbers with this here on this video, but that's the idea. You get a distance between you and some object that can produce an echo, um, and then you measure how long it takes from the production of the sound until the echo returns to where the sound was produced. If you know the time that it takes for that and the distance, remember that speed is distance over time, bam, that's it. You can calculate the speed of sound in air with reasonable accuracy. So, all right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope it was, hope it was helpful, and I'll see you next time.